so we're wet. we're approaching the quarter mark of the season and teams are starting to settle in. Uh, you've got teams like the Warriors, for example, who have a record that's probably indicative of their process, not necessarily their talent. Uh, you've got the Lakers, who have a record probably indicative of their talent uh, makeup, not necessarily the talent together. And the team that I want to kind of highlight a little bit is the Miami Heat. Uh, the Miami Heat is, are currently sitting... Uh, I should have had this up just slightly beforehand. Uh, they are currently sitting uh, 12th with a 6-7 and seven record, and they're in the same level of struggle town as the 76ers, uh, the Nets, and even the Knicks to a degree. Uh, but the difference is, is that you know Miami, we just assume, is a playoff team. So they struggle during the regular season, and then they get to the playoffs and they do okay. Uh, what I'm going to contentiously say is that whatever window they have to compete is only salvageable by one trade and i actually think this is the landing spot for russell westbrook in which he carries them through the regular season enough to get them to the playoffs because miami is currently lumbered with a couple of bad contracts and kyle larry being one of them duncan robinson being the second uh, but they need a shot on the arm for the regular season. You know, you can envision him and Bam working very well together. But the flip side here is I actually think this is a trade the Lakers wouldn't make because they would take on additional salary for future years. And I don't think the return of Lowry and Robinson are fantastic. But that's my hot take is that the Miami Heat's window to be salvaged is via Russell Westbrook. <laughs> I feel that's a desperate take. Would you? Would you? Would you? you I, I, I actually was thinking at the Miami Heat this week, and they're definitely underperforming. Uh, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think Butler's still saying that this team is constructed and can win a championship. I think that was one of his press conferences in the last few days, and uh, I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with that, but I think they're definitely underperforming, and they will right their ship, even without such a desperate trade. <laughs> I, I personally think the biggest thing that they've gone a little bit um, off course is the Tyler Hero starting situation. Um, it was probably quite clear that he thrived in that role as a six man. Okay. And he obviously got paid for that role as a six man. And last year, if you sort of think back, um, is it Caleb Martin? Or Cody yep. Martin, Caleb, is it? Caleb Martin in Miami Caleb. and Caleb Martin, yeah, and uh, Max Strauss, okay, and even Duncan Robinson sort of being able to take that um, two spot and obviously start was sort of a sort of a interchangeable by committee on any given week by Spolstra. And, but the given that was, that was happening last season was Hero was that constant off the bench, that spark plug off the bench. And I don't know. I think the Heat here probably just need to look at their rotations, look at their personnel. Um, I'm not saying they're a contending team, but I think they can definitely right the ship. So they obviously then getting back in that top six contention sort of spot. So I don't know. I, I just don't see why. And I've said this all along I, and you sort of pointed out, okay, Lakers would not pull the trigger on such a trade because they're taking more salary back. Whereas they seem to have found a better spot for Westbrook um, at the moment coming off the bench and he sort of settled into that role and they're, you know, starting to, well, at least Westbrook is, you know, being a bit more productive in that sort of sort of spot. Um, but, you know, I just I just don't see why Miami should panic at this point and pull such a trade either. Like just, I don't, I don't think that's the situation. Well, I think it's about a window. So, you know, the bubble season gets a lot of uh, criticism for being a little erratic. Uh, but Miami had a legitimate run there and gave the Lakers somewhat of a competitive series. Uh, you know, you factor in Goran Dragic not getting hurt and, you know, maybe Bam kind of living up to the role that they kind of needed him to be to compete with Anthony Davis. And we're looking at 2020 very differently. Mm -hmm. Then you're talking about a burnout season 21, which, you know, a lot of the teams that made it through the bubble burn out. And then you've got last year in which they get within a shot really, of getting to the finals. And I think it's one of those things where, you know, we agree they get to the playoffs, they're very interesting. Uh, you know, you can see them being eliminated in the first round. You can 
plausibly see them go all the way to the finals. I think the concern, or at least the, the prompt for this take is, Westbrook is quite a proven regular season player. I think you add him to your team, he gets you 10, 15 wins just off, like, you know, sheer energy. Westbrook and... gets you 10, 15 wins right now off sheer energy? Yeah. <laughs> What which makes you reason, say that? Can you can you apply the 10 15 wins to the Lakers off sheer energy? The Lakers are a different thing about this. The Lakers are a different circumstance. There's no shooting on that team. Anthony Davis isn't a consistent big, and he has seen he has seemed a little bit more allergic to the paint in the past, right? So put Westbrook on the heat with multiple shooters spread around and a big you, who does want to at least take the ring. I think I, I personally think quite an interesting team there. You're taking you're talking about Russell Westbrook 2022, yeah. Not, yeah. not, not 2018. No. <laughs> it's going to get the Miami Heat or ultimately you're saying any team he goes to an extra 10, 15 wins from sheer no, no, no. willingness. No, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say talking... that he can go to... This is a specific circumstance. So where... the Miami Heat. Yeah. Because... That may be the headline. Maybe that's your headline. Westbrook could add 10 to 15 games on their standings to the Heat if he was there this season. That could be a headline. I feel like you've got some real brotherly love here for Russell Westbrook, considering from our first podcast where you really wanted to pitch him as a winner and you rolled out all the stats. I just, I just, I, I just think... don't think you need to really maybe t- taper your your expectations of Westbrook where he's at now in twenty twenty two. I still think productive player still has a lot to give. I think the Lake situation is very unique. I think that there's, uh, you know, there have been teams in the past that have had players that just cannot thrive in that circumstance. Carmelo Anthony is a good example of that. He needed a very specific team to have a certain level of success. And then obviously he spent the last couple of years bouncing around trying to fit into a role. Not everyone gets to be built around for their entire career. In fact, there's very few anyway, but Westbrook in a specific circumstance can still be very productive. Right. So it previously it was all about taking mediocre teams to the sixth or below seed. And now obviously there's championship aspirations, but he's with another ball dominant player, doesn't really fit. But the Miami thing with a team built around shooters, an actual big that knows how to play the big. And then I guess, you know, Jimmy Butler, who would take those closing shots from the mid range, but also, you know, defensively take care of things as well. It's an interesting fit. Right, as I said, it's not a plausible option anymore. The Lakers aren't competitive enough to take a swing for that, but it would be an interesting experiment if we could try it. 